are moving to our second session. Our second speaker is Dr. S. Veeramani. He's a scholar, research advisor, and prolific writer. He did BA, MA, and MPhil in English language and literature in St. Joseph College, Tirichirapalli. He obtained PhD in postmodernism from Bharati Dawson University. He has published 20 such articles in international index impact journals. He has 10 years of teaching experience. He is an assistant professor of English in Arunir Anna Government Arts and Science College Navakar. Now we hand over this session to you, sir. This session is yours. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, first of all, I have to thank uh, the Malaysian Industrial Relations and the Human Resource Association Malaysia and Lavender Literary Club the India and Cape Commer Interest jointly have organized this wonderful uh, training program that is workshop on research methodology, research writing, and manuscript editing. This is a wonderful topic to discuss today in this uh, present scenario. So first of all, I have to thank the organizers and especially this uh, president of uh, Lavender Literary Club, Mr. Dr. Satya, for uh, having given this um, yeah, beautiful and uh, wonderful opportunity to share a few points about the research design and research methodology in social sciences. It can be used for even in literature, even in English language teaching, because literature, English language and literature and ELT and also the linguistics that are coming under the umbrella term called the social sciences. So that's why I would like to talk about the research design, how it can be uh, taken up, okay, in the decourse of the time when you do your uh, research. Okay, yes, I would like to share my screen. Uh, I think my screen is visible to you. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, this is my topic uh, today is research design and methods in social sciences. As I told you earlier, that is uh, literature and ELT, linguistics, uh, these are all coming under one roof called social sciences. So that's why today people are very much interested in uh, uh, doing the research. Okay, not only in the academic forum, but also independently they do research on their own they wanted to do something for the society they wanted to uh, what should i say uh, bring forth something for the useful for the people and the downtrodden people the disabled the people and so on that's why we take up the uh, study called the research okay research is not that simply whatever we have in our mind uh, which cannot be presented in the form of uh, writing or in the form of uh, what should I say, thesis or uh, paper and so on. But it has its own quality. It has its own uh, design and uh, structure and all these things are there. Okay, only then the research can be uh, justifiable. Okay, that's why I would like to um, talk about the research design today. Yes. Research design and methods in social sciences. What exactly research is? This is my question. Okay, research is, in my point of view, what I tell you is, you do something, along with the doing, you apply some sort of uh, technology, and then you come up with the new ideology, or else a new concept, new invention, for the betterment of the people in the world. So this is what we call research, first of all. But many dictionaries and many books have defined research as this and that and all that. But it is not necessary to 
take up those uh, statements for the definition of the research. But each and every person has his or her own thinking and thought. That's why you create your own thinking and you create your own thoughts. As uh, the previous speaker, Dr. Johnson says, it is a kind of a collaborative. The collaboration is to be taken place even in research and in educational, um, uh, I mean, uh, uh, what should I say, and academic uh, institutions. So this is what I would like to tell you in the beginning itself at the outset. There are two types of research. Under the research, we have uh, subtitles. Yeah, what should I say? Uh, I'm thinking the number of uh, subtitles we have. But there are two common types. Number one is uh, uh, correlation research. Number two is experimental research. The correlation research, it is to talk about and it is to determine the two or more variables that are related. This is uh, the correlation research. Now you can ask a question that is, what is a variable? Yeah, variable is nothing but it talks about, it defines itself as weight, time, height, and other measurable qualities and measurable quantities that are called variables. And your research may be interested in determining, say, for example, the weight is related to weight. You know that. It's very simple. Weight is related to weight, example. When a person grows, automatically the person's weight is also increasing. So this is the uh, fundamental and this is the common, uh, what would I say, uh, point to discuss. But the here, but the thing is, when a person when a, when a person grows, automatically the weight is also increasing. This is the common ideology. The, this is the common medical terminology, okay. But if does not do, if does not it take place, there is a problem in the research, okay. A correlation is nothing but a kind of relationship between two things, and which does not mean that one thing caused the other. So here we find that if uh, what do they say? Sometimes some people can grow, but they may not uh, increase their weight. So this is not that uh, uh, he is uh, her own uh, problem, but it is not that uh, it is a kind of medical uh, problems. Okay, but the correlation research is very simple. I tell you that variables are determined. The variables are, what do they say, for, I mean, uh, qualified and quantified, the variables. As I told you, variables are nothing but weight, time, and height, and other measurable things are called the variables, including numbers. Okay, including numbers can be called variables. Yes, the uh, second research, the uh, what do I say? The fundamental and the basic, the broad two kinds of research is one. The number one is the correlation research. Number two is experimental research. Experimental research is nothing but a cause and effect conclusion. Okay, but in the correlation research, we are not talking about the cause, but we are talking about only the variables and how variables are determined. But whereas here in experimental research, a cause and effect is taking place for the conclusion, comparing two groups. OK. And also that the comparison is taking place to measure, to test some hypothesis. OK, hypothetical statement, you know that. St still, some people are using more number of hypothetical statements. As far as many research books are concerned, a researcher can use only two or three 
or even four or five hypotheses, not more than four or five hypotheses. But still people, the researchers are using more than five hypothetical statements. It's very, very dangerous for the researcher, I tell you, if they go in for uh, more than five types of uh, hypotheses or five different types of uh, hypotheses, they find it very difficult to conclude. They find it very, very difficult to bring out their research to the hypothetical statements to be proved upon. So that's why I tell you that you please use only three or four hypothetical statements in your research. Either it can be physics or chemistry, mathematics, or even in engineering. But you, you, do, you do not worry about that. Uh, uh, any uh, how many numbers of uh, hypothetical statements uh, should be written like that? But four hypothetical statements are enough to discuss. So under this uh, hypothetical statement. Okay, under this uh, hypothetical, I mean, uh, experimental research, we have social researchers. Because the social researchers, they do their research. The people are called variables. The people are called uh, their respondents. Okay, and then quantitative research and qualitative research. The research should be quantitative as well as qualitative. For the sake of doing research, you should not do the research. Research is for the sake of society. First of all, you must understand. So it is not for the sake of uh, uh, writing uh, 200 pages or 150 pages according to the university's uh, uh, requirement. You should not write like that. But under the experimental research, we can have social researchers, quantitative researchers, qualitative researchers. And then we have the another method is mixed methods. Now we have uh, mixed methods in uh, various uh, streams. They have mixed methods. Sometimes one method cannot give the exact, uh, what should I say, uh, the meaning, the exact uh, uh, definition or else the exact conclusion how a researcher expected when he started doing the research program and so on so that's why some people are very much interested and some guides are advisors okay and the research advisors can ask the researchers to go in for the mixed methods okay the another thing is art based research here you find that art-based research is nothing but the research article or research thesis should be based on art. Art in the sense some decorative things are there in the research. And then community participatory research, based research. The community-based participatory, you find that the people are also included in this research. So these two are uh, very, very uh, common and also broad areas of research. Under these two categories, some researchers can select the research methods and their methodology and so on. OK, yes. Next, a research study I, or else the research plan, first of all, some uh, researchers uh, have the teething trouble to uh, go in for uh, beginning the uh, research. Okay, they find it very difficult how to go about the research at the beginning itself. Okay, so what I tell you is these points can be uh, fulfilled when a researcher take I me mean, researcher can uh, take the research. Okay. So the first point you know, on the screen you can see that the title of the study, some researcher, still I am a, a research advisor for, for a, a research students. But one research student came and asked me, sir, could you please tell me 
the title for my research sir so i mean they, they think that from the title itself the research advisor would guide us would guide him they think in that way but it is not that right way of uh, doing the research the guide should not do anything else sir, first of all okay there is just guiding so here you find that some people are blinking like anything to find out the title first of all but they must have the confidence enough to choose the title first of all or else the broad area of research or else the um the subtitle okay not that uh, the exact title but the subtitle or the broad area of research the broad title they should not do that but they think that all will be done by the guide or research supervisor they think like that but the research study or the research plan should be there the title of the study is very very essential next point is the problem statements the problem statements are very very essential without having the problem statement when you do the research you must know the problem study you must know the problem which problem is there and for this particular problem you are going to provide the solutions in your research in your thesis so these things must be there but some researchers they do not know what is the problem statements they do not know what is the purpose statements purpose statements whether your research is for the society or for the engineering people or for the medical people or for any other person exclusively you must know the specific uh, audience and how it uh, goes as a benefit to the uh, I mean uh, people okay this is the purpose statements the next point to discuss is the research questions hypothesis or objectives in this particular point they are uh, not well versed in this um, uh, concept that is the research question they do not know what is a research question first of all they have to think why which where and what all these questions they must ask and they must get the answers for all the questions raised by the researchers and then only they can go in for the hypothetical statements and the objectives of their research and so on but then uh, the there is literature reviews literature reviews they uh, when they write i they could see that many uh, people do that uh, in the literature review they just simply copy from a one source uh, uh, for their research okay and then they, they simply paste it okay they paste on the research study and then automatically it will go to the uh, plagiarism a 50 percentage or a 60 percentage of a plagiarism it goes but what i tell you when you do the research it is very very essential to write upon the literature reviews when you do the literature reviews, you must paraphrase, you must write on your own. You just understand, understand the concept and then write on your own. It is not that literature reviews should be copied and pasted on the uh, thesis itself. It is not like that. But still people, I mean, the researchers are doing the same uh, mistake. I tell you that it is a mistake and then the theory base of the study theory base of the study you know that uh, which theory you are going to use you must understand if you are uh, where you may uh, belong to any department okay whatever uh, the department uh, it may be okay uh, uh, physics chemistry biology computer science uh, even in uh, social sciences and psychology or whatever it may be but you must know the theory first of all the theory which you are going to use or the concept which you are going to use the theory which you are going to use to prove your hypothetical statements okay this is what we call that the theory base of the study and then the theory base of the study is nothing but only the uh, for example 
is uh, the literary writer researchers they do only the theory based study okay they read novels they read the dramas they read the poems and then they apply any theory or any uh, method then they write their whole thesis the entire thesis but even if you want to do the theory base of the study there should be a logic that logic should be a philosophical it's not that simply a logic the logic should be a philosophical and then only you can prove your statement especially the hypothetical the hypothetical statements and then methods section you must select the method as i told you earlier which method you are going to use mixed method are you going to use or direct method or else you are you going to do the inductive method or deductive method uh, or else uh, uh, there are a number of methods there are a number of methods in a research okay so how you are going to make use of the methods so this is the research plan first of all the title of the study the problem statements the purpose statements the hypothesis or objectives literature reviews the theory base of study the methods section so these are very very fundamental in doing the research yes the next point your literature review what is literature review but people are uh, thinking that you take any material and then the material can be copied from one source to another and the copied material can be incorporated in the thesis they think in this particular way this is very very wrong full way this is not the right way of doing your literature review the literature review is a kind of process and product okay when you have the process process which means it includes okay which includes the method the methodology the statements which you are going to use the hypothetical statements which you are going to use all these are called processes the process and the product you find that the final thesis will be the product okay doing and creating nothing but doing and creating in simple concept in simple matter in simple language uh, uh, i if i tell you to define what is uh, literature review is doing and creating when you do something automatically the creation will be as he, is, he told the previous speaker told that hearts higher order thinking skills and lower order thinking skills in bloom's taxonomy so in the bloom's taxonomy uh, in the higher order thinking skills we find that the sixth uh, cognitive domain will be that uh, creation the creating the creation or the creating should be there okay yeah literature review is the process of uh, searching for reading summarizing and synthesizing you find that it's very very simple atla and clack says it is a uh, reading you read the other sources summarizing you are going to summarize the source which you read okay and then synthesizing you are going to synthesize your own thought your own ideology your own hypothetical statements in the literature review topics and literature review materials okay and then you find that finally the proper research so this is the point i would like to tell you and then it is a kind of a comprehensive overview of the previous research okay it's a very very important point is without knowing the previous uh, uh, research and their outcomes and how they are using and how they have conducted the research program how you are going to do it okay because your thought your idea your concept your new thinking innovation might be overlapped with the previous researchers uh, ideology or concepts so that you have to uh, be different you have to differ from the previous researchers uh, research and then you have to do the innovative research only then we uh, only then uh, you are able to 
do your research with the flying colors this is what i tell you that so that the literature review is very important some english uh, uh, studies may not have the literature review but in some of the universities in uh, india they uh, require literature review even for english language and literature students that's why i tell you that it is a kind of a uh, learn new things okay so that's why literature review is an essential process of doing your yeah, research your yeah, research purpose statement you have to specify the purpose or objective of the research first of all simply you cannot say that my research is going to do this my research is going to contribute to the people of this kind people of that kind and uh, uh, students of this uh, scenario and that scenario you can never say like that but specify the purpose the specific study is called a first of all research i tell you that and the objective of the research should be specific that's why uh, uh the dr johnson he said that uh, it is the obe of um, outcomes based education in the outcomes based education there should be a proper outcome it is not that simply objective but a proper outcome should uh, come when you do your research out of the research that outcome should be used for the people used for society used for a particular community and so on so that's why specify the purpose or the objective of the research and then the research topic should be our a kind of information okay and then the participants are the data setting and methodology all these things are there under the roof called a research purpose statement research purpose statement how we are going to take up the research okay it is not that simply i'm doing this that but how as i told you earlier you ask questions any number of questions about your thesis about your research you find the answers and then you have the uh, proper uh, and specific uh, concept to take up for your research and so on so this is the point i would like to tell you and that is the data setting and methodology and participants okay some people are very much interested in, in collecting data through um, supplying the questioner okay supplying the questioner or survey or else interviews something like that so he or she must understand the participants uh, uh, situation whether they belong to this uh, uh, category or that category or are they able to answer your questions or your questionnaire or else the survey and so on so we have to be very careful to select the participants for collecting the data and so on and then methods of data collection so and generation and guiding theories as i told you earlier the methods of data collection data collection can be uh, had through various methods like uh, as i told you earlier that is a questionnaire and survey method and interviews and uh, um, what should i say uh, asking the people to write something okay just they can uh, uh, you can send a postal questionnaire also postal questionnaire to the concerned person's house and then they can uh, uh, fill it up and then they can send it to you back you can uh, what should i say codify all the uh, concepts all the data and then you find you find that uh, the uh, what should i say consolidate the concepts okay so all these things are there so the, through the proper method automatically the final research the final conclusion of your research will be something wrong so the method is what should i say it is very very scrupulous okay and it has to be very very careful the researcher must be very careful in selecting the methods of data collection unless otherwise the research is really 
uh, null and void, as I told you earlier. Okay, it is a null and void. Next thing is, yeah, hypothesis. Kinds of hypothesis. There are three major kinds of hypothesis. Number one is null hypothesis. I read out the point uh, how the null hypothesis defines itself as no significant difference between two groups with respect to the variable being tested. Even the variables are being tested, there is no significant different. Okay, there is no significant difference is, uh, uh, what should I say, uh, brought out when you do the hypothetical statement with the research point of view. Okay, so this is what we call that the null hypothesis. The two groups are being tested, but there is no significant difference. It is not that difference, but I carefully use the term word that is significant difference. And the second hypothesis is directional hypothesis. The directional hypothesis is nothing but it is a specific difference between two groups with respect to the variable being tested. So this is uh, very, very important. Okay. The directional, the directional hypothesis is a specific one. We know that it is a specific one. And when you, I mean, when you test two variables, you find the proper answer and the specific difference is there. When you have the specific difference, automatically you are able to to take up the research properly in proper way okay this is why i tell you that directional hypothesis is very very essential and the non-directional hypothesis it's a difference between two groups with respect to the variables being tested but there is not that a significant difference will be there so this is the non-directional hypothesis sometimes hypothetical statements can be proved and cannot be proved it is not that all the hypothesis and hypothetical statements should be proven it's not like that but when you do your research in the due course of the time if you are not able to prove the hypothetical statements earlier you gave in the final thesis in the conclusion if you are not able to meet out the uh, uh, hypothetical statements your thesis is uh, totally and uh, completely original. Your thesis is totally and uh, completely original because you thought in different way earlier, but in the due course of the time, when you take up the research properly, okay, step by step with using lots of uh, strenuous efforts with the proper method or methodology, finally you find uh, the research finding will be something different. So that is the real research. And then five major approaches to research. The quantitative research, qualitative research, mixed method research, MMR, then art-based research, ABR, then community-based participatory research, CBPR. Okay, yes, quantitative research. It's a kind of detective approach okay and it is to prove the statement you want to prove your uh, hypothetical statement as well as you are uh, giving the uh what it is a confidence okay and then you take up the uh theories that can be disproved okay the theories can be disproved especially in the existing theories so this is what i told you earlier it is not that you must accept the person's ideology. You should not accept my point of view, even my point of view. The just have your research mind and then you take up the research. And this uh, a qualitative res sorry, quantitative research involves the measuring variables. Okay, variables in order to reveal patterns, correlations, and causal relationships. 
and then you want to measure the quantity i mean quantity of the variables when you when you test the quantity or else any variable automatically the result will be something x or y okay why that method is used the quantitative method or the quantitative research is used it is for the linear method of data collection and it is to analyze that the result in statistical data what what are the values okay for every method you find a value and what are the values the values are nothing but in neutrality the neutral point of view the objectivity the objectivity in the sense it is not that a subjective matter it is not that a subjective point of view it's not from my own point of view it's not from uh, the researcher point of view but it is according to the variables being tested finally what you have found that founding point is the objectivity okay and then to acquire i mean to acquire the sizable concepts the scope and the knowledge so these are all the values of the quantitative research and then qualitative research it is a kind of inductive approach to knowledge building to generate meaning okay it is to generate meaning in the sense you create something new and new when you interpret your data you find something new okay it is not that uh, uh, you should not interpret your data but when you collect the data when your interpretation actually you after collecting the data you have to interpret that is the process of research when you interpret your data you find something new that new invention can lead to yet another new okay that final uh, finding will be something uh, newer so it becomes the generation of meaning and this qualitative research is to explore okay and uh, this is the a kind of a social phenomenon and also it talks about the activities of the people situations events artifacts and and so many things especially in the uh, terms of uh, social life and uh, in the dimension of a social life and so on okay now you can say that what are the values of a qualitative research yeah people subject to experiences and meaning making process and acquiring a depth of understanding are the values you find that meaning making is one process and subject to experience is another process and acquiring a depth knowledge in a particular field is another process so there are three processes are taking place in the qualitative research that's why we call that these are the values under the qualitative research and then mixed method research mmr okay this mixed method research is for the collecting the uh, collecting the data and analyzing the data and then quantitative and qualitative data in a single project uh, yeah this is very very uh, common today in the 21st century uh, even in business uh, research uh, not only in business research in medical research people and the researchers are using the mixed methods research okay so collecting the data analyzing you find any number of methods and quantitative qualitative data in a single project and then uh, uh, quality phase and vice versa and these are all uh, taking place especially especially this kind of mixed methods research can be used in applied social and behavioral science research this behavioral science research is nothing but the research in psychology research in psychiatry psychiatry that comes under the medicine okay medical field that's why uh, still people uh, think that this uh, method is uh, uh, suitable this method is ideal for uh, uh, their research and so on so this is what we call that mixed method that is mmr art based research abr it is a kind of creative arts in social research projects okay uh, and uh, the practice and the theory both the concepts are uh, um uh, intertwined okay intertwined uh, either the, i mean uh, if an influential theory is used for practice 
that the practice is somewhat like influential that the practice can be reshaped the uh, theory okay that uh, by the by the theory that's why we call that intertwined and then arts based practices draw on literary writings exclusively this arts based research is uh, meant for the researchers those who are taking up their research on music dance writing literary writing dramas visual art film okay and other artistic me media okay all these things are there and it is to inquire the process of the aesthetic values the aesthetic understanding okay aesthetic understanding it is to explore and also provoke certain emotions upon the upon the audience our readers our onlookers so that's why we have that the arts based research that is what we call abr yes and then community based participatory research cbpr it is a kind of a collaborative as uh, the previous speaker spoke no it is a collaborative the collaboration is very very important in the uh, 21st century uh, as he said that nac also requires okay ipl cac also requires the nrf also requires this uh, collaboration okay the collaborative partners the stakeholders with the industries uh, uh, yeah that's why i use the word non academic stakeholders non academic stakeholders in the sense the industry people okay or else uh, the uh, those who are working in uh, some other uh, community way uh, then it is uh, collaborated okay the research is uh, collaborated the what is the purpose of this its purpose is to promote community change or action so that's why we call that the community based participatory research the main elements of research yeah the, we find that the main elements of research there are three main elements philosophical praxis ethics under the philosophical we have ontology the scientific study about the existing things and the scientific study about the uh, knowledge this is what we call the epistemology and then practice practice deals with the genre the design okay the method which you are going to use the methods and the practices the theory the theory is also somewhat we call that the method okay yes then ethics a yeah, philosophical ethic or practice we find that values ethics reflexivity what are the values in your uh, research what are the ethical values in your research and what is the reflexivity in your research so all these things are there they are under the uh, caption called the, the main elements of research okay yes actually research is it is uh, uh, the ethics it involves morality the researcher must have the morality first of all okay the integrity should be there the fairness the truthfulness these are all the part and parcel of the uh, doing the research okay and then the situational ethics refers to the ethics in practice ethics in practice in the sense you must have the care okay care in doing the research simply whatever you think whatever you speak with the respondents you cannot speak with the respondents okay you cannot have that uh, uh, simply uh, this is the way i have to behave that is the way i am used to behave i was used to behave not like that but it centers upon the interpersonal relationship between the researcher and the participants it's a highly essential point of uh, uh, thing to be considered by the researchers it uh, it is applicable to all kinds of research all kinds of researchers it is not that only the english language and literature it is not only for uh, uh, the elt people it is not only for the linguistic people but it is uh, meant for all the people that research ethics must be there otherwise the researcher must cultivate the research ethics it's a kind of interpersonal relation between the researcher and the participants yeah it is a genre design 
that a genre design can have a certain effects. Okay, certain research methods. Here, the left side you find that the design, the right side you find that the research methods. The first one is sometimes experimental research. That the experimental research can be had through the randomized questionnaire, randomized data, randomized sampling. Okay, or else a single subject. Then the survey research. For the survey research, you can uh, throw out the uh, questionnaire and then uh, in a numerous way you can administer. Then interview. Interview is a kind of a structured, okay, structured and also it is a semi-structured sometimes and also it is in-depth, okay, the biographical, minimalist and all these are coming under this uh, design called interview. Then the field study is also a kind of a genre or else a design. Under the field study, you find that the participant observation. You are going to observe how the participant uh, responds to your question or to your uh, requirements and so on. Okay. And now we find that a digital uh, way of uh, questioning and digital way of answering and so on. So you need not to go to the uh, field study. If it is uh, necessary, you can go to the field and you can uh, do your research. And then unobtrusive method. It is a kind of a content analysis, document analysis. Okay, that, this is what we call in a forensic uh, uh, linguistics. That is the uh, question documents. Okay, it is what we call that the question documents and visual analysis, audio analysis, audio visual analysis. All are coming under this design called unobtrusive methods. Next method is, I mean, design is case study. You know that case study. Then self data, mixed methods, okay. Then literary practices, performative practices, visual arts practices, community based practices. These are all called the design for your research. And then the practices and the methods, how the design can be channelized through the practices. This is what we call the research design and method, okay. And then, yeah. With this, I complete my today's session. So thank you very much. Thank you. If you have any question, please let me know. I am very much interested in answering your question. Good evening, sir. Yes. Dear participants, if you have any questions, you can ask. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, thank you very much for this session. So it was very uh, enlightening. Um, sir, okay. you spoke about kinds of hypothesis, sir, null, directional, and non-directional, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, this null hypothesis, sir, you said like when there is no significant difference between the variables. Two variables, yeah. Uh, there is no significant difference between two variables. But you yes, are... Sir, going... so... Sorry. Yes, yes. Sir, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. So if I am into a research, like if I have a, like uh, if I'm a scholar and I'm just going to start my research and then when you are, you are a scholar, of, you, you belong to the department of so English, it's sir. English. Okay. 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 Yes. Sir. So if I'm doing a research and halfway through, I find out that, uh, like uh, my, uh, hypothesis is null. Yeah. So yeah. Does yeah. that mean that, does that mean that I will it's have to stop my what? research? definitely it is acceptable and also what you do is original research so sir uh, like if i find out that my uh, hypothesis is null so i will have to take a different direction like i will have to yeah. change something yeah you can change and that's why i tell you that the hypothetical statements can be had of four or five okay four okay, or so five should... not more than five hypothetical statements so you can go in for some other hypothetical statement and then you can prove that. So even if you prove that null hypothesis, that is what we call that you are doing your proper research. Your thesis is original and you are not doing any kind of plagiarism. Oh, OK, sir. OK, so my my hypothesis, if it is null and uh, will that 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 will be considered as an original piece and then I will have to go with uh, another set of hypothesis and try to prove that yeah yeah sure 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 yeah exactly okay. you can okay. go in for that 